we conclude now the 26th letter lengthy we've had no less than um sorry eighth class on this letter so how do you eradicate evil from this world so some people is you know telling by telling you that you're going to go to you know you're going to go somewhere so you know you better change your ways others is you know they take the evil people with them in the in the, from this world right? but that's not how we do it as we have explained the shechina is an exile in klipas neiga in a shell that's covering over on the shechina the divine presence of god and therefore our main function now in this world in the area of mitzvahs is doing in the physical act of mitzvah because we release that uh, spark of God but in Torah study is, is what our focus is and that's what we're doing also by the way is to seek and to elevate the sparks of holiness from Klippa right therefore our current um, concentration is on laws that have to do with prohibition permission kosher non-kosher um and you know pure impure and so on and so forth right why because through that we bring an elucidation from that area of question through that elucidation we're able now to take the the the, the spark of divinity there extract it elevate it right so if we do this enough this kind of study and of course through mitzvahs there will become a point that the shechina is going to totally emerge from klipas naiga after extracting those sparks and we have completed our job because let's understand evil a negative negative force only has vitality from complete evil only has vitality from klipas naiga right evil is not a force of its own it doesn't have its own um, concentration of vitality that it feeds off it feeds off klipas noiga the admixture of good and evil and klipas noiga feeds off or is vitalized from complete holiness kedusha from the shechina itself from godliness itself so what happens when that middle layer of klipas noiga that we engage in the world in such a way right that we engage in the world in such a way that we have now refined the whole area of klipas noiga it's all been elevated therefore there's no place for complete negativity evil to be nurtured it doesn't have a source of its own its source is from klipas noiga but klipas noiga has been dealt with so to speak it's been elevated it's been elevated and now there's no more of it it's dispersed what does that mean again we've extracted the sparks of goodness of holiness and completed it the evil has been separated from the good evil becomes dispersed eradicated it's gone and the tree of knowledge and good and evil which is the life force of klipas naiga which prevails now in a time of exile will no longer be the dominant force 
because the good will have departed from it. Klippas Neige is only dominant now in this world is because in the negative force of Klippas Neige, there's good there. But if we've taken the good out of there, again, through our mitzvahs in, in, in the physical acts of mitzvahs, and we have done it in Torah through the Torah study of, as we've explained, the eluc- you know deliberation to elucidate Torah teachings, to bring greater clarity. So then what's going to happen? We're still going to study Torah, but the Torah will not be to extract and to refine because there's a refinement. Evil has departed. So what will it be? Then the Torah study, because after all, Torah is the divine wisdom, so it's not like we're going to stop learning Torah. But it won't be, again, it will not be about the refinement, extracting the sparks. But it'll be about Yichud. Yichud means union. union, A marriage of sorts. A marriage between the divine male and female parts of the divine. This is what the Arizal explains. That's what we will engage in. So everything will be accomplished, this union that we create through our Torah study, this marriage of sorts, right, that we uh, accomplish through our Torah study, um, will be accomplished by the inward aspect of Torah teaching, the esoteric dimension, like we're learning now in Tanya. And by, of course, the performance of the commandments with lofty mystical appreciation and awareness and devotion that will bring a light, a divine light into this world. Um, parenthetically, the Alter Rebbe says that, um, that, that our sages say that that we won't have Torah, uh, the mitzvahs in the time to come. So the Alter says that's in a, a later time in after the resurrection of the dead. However, um, when Mashiach comes, which means that, that the evil has been eradicated from the world, as we just explained how that happens, right, by engaging in the Klippa Snoiga, and extracting, that's our job now, the refinement of extracting the good from the negative force in Klippa, and hence elevating it, elevating it ultimately, that then Klippa's Neuga is no longer Klippa's Neuga because it's been elevated, and therefore complete evil has no place, and even Klippa's Neuga is all dispersed. So this then when that occurs, in the times of Mashiach, we'll still learn. But the learning will not be to refine the world. It's been refined. We, we, we finish that. But it will create the divine marriage, divine union above, to bring that light into this world. And that's why the study of Torah then will mainly be directed to the innermost mystical teachings like Tanya. And when we do the commandments, fulfill the mitzvahs, it will be with an awareness of the hidden reasons, the mystical dimension, right? The revealed aspects of Torah, like the Talmud, will be manifest and be known to to every Jew. How? Well, either innately, or it'll be learned once and not forgotten and won't be forgotten now only the mixed multitude will have to toil in the these aspects of torah in order to have a clarity 
because they will have not merited to taste the tree of life, the inward teachings. Therefore, they will need to engage in the Mishnah in order to weaken the negative forces of Klippa that still will cleave to them. In order that that, that negative force should not dominate them and cause them to do wrong. So, I don't know what the mixed multitude is. I don't know what that means in the times of, you know, Mashiach. But that's the term that he uses. Um, so they will be need to learn the law in order to know what's fit, what's unfit, and so on. But the rest... Again, or or the Jewish people, I, I don't know what the reference, what that means. And I haven't found yet an answer, so I'm sorry. Um, but we'll just call it by the name and for now, mixed multitude, Erev Rav. Um, but the Jewish people, they will know things from the inward aspect of Torah. In other words, right now, if I need know need to know how to observe Shabbos, I need to know the laws of Shabbos. If I need to know how to observe, um, you know, uh, uh, the laws of prayer, so I need to learn in Shulchan Aruch the code of Jewish law, and to learn those things, in order that I should have the the knowledge and the capability and the know how to uh, to observe what I need to observe. But in times of Mashiach, because evil will be eradicated. So there'll be a clarity of divine presence that it's possible, indeed probable, says the al Rebbe, that the fundamentals of Jewish observance will come from the inward aspect of Torah. We see that by Abraham, our forefather, that he fulfilled the entire Torah with, before it was given. In other words, he had the capability of of knowing the mystical dimension from the mystical dimension that brought him to do the act that was necessary right so um so we won't need to occupy ourselves in the laws defining that which is permitted and prohibited pure and all um even though in the times of second temple the sages did the presence of god was there in the shrina in the holy temple well, aside from practical application they needed, but that was the main service then. You have to understand, even in the Second Temple, where there was a presence of God in the Holy Temple, the world was still embody, an embodiment of Klippus Noiga, of the husk, the shell that covers over on the Divine Presence. And therefore, their duty then was to study Torah in such a way to weaken the, that power of, of Klippa subjugate it and refine it by extracting the good in their Torah studies and so on. But that was then. In times of Mashiach where evil is eradicated, um, there isn't that need. So therefore, we will be able to come to how to live our lives from an inward dimension rather than from outward awareness and how to do the do's and don'ts. So the author that concludes this amazing letter after the above words of truth, it will be possible and clear to understand the passage that we quoted from the Zohar, Rai Mahemna, uh, previously about the tree of good and evil, um, which prohibition and permission means klipas noiga which is the mainstay of this world, as the Eitz Chaim, the Arizal explains, and this will suffice for the discerning. Okay. Let's take this apart, and then we'll take questions and answers. It's a very powerful idea of a means to create a world of good, <laughs> right? By our engagement in the nitty-gritty 
of the material world, the nitty-gritty of Torah teachings, and trying to gain greater elucidation through being deliberating. We will come to a time that we will end all the negative forces of this world. They will not have dominion of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life will. And uh, that's our job now is to eradicate it when it comes to the times of Mashiach. Actually, the Rebbe said we need to open up our eyes because we've done all of this work of refinement. We just need to open up our eyes and I think what the Rebbe means is that we should live like Mashiach is here. If we live like Mashiach is here, so now we're not dealing with negativity, to, but we're dealing with the positive side. I think that that's what it means. So we need to live a different way that is like Mashiach. Not to see the negative forces around us and we have to um, refine it. Although this is what the teachings of the Arizal is saying here, I'm adding something innovative of the Rebbe. <laughs> um, that we li- we have a choice. We could live like we're in exile, and therefore we need to refine the world. Or we can open up our eyes and see how redemption is unfolding. And if redemption is unfolding, um, live as if you're in a redeemed world. Now, that doesn't mean to be foolish and, you know, think that the, uh, you know, the Hitlers and the Stalins of the world are, you know, but, you know, it's not our, wor- the truth is that's not our world, you know. Who's dealing with that? We're not, you know, I mean, for sure not that kind of thing, but live in a in a like a, a redeemed world and therefore our our torah and mitzvahs become not merely something as a tool to refine the world but it's to bring greater light into this world and that's what will happen times mashiach we won't need to refine the world we'll need to do study torah do mitzvahs but it will be in the positive sense What's the positive? That we are creating a union above, a divine marriage. Every time we study Torah and, you know, that'd be amazing. That's amazing to live that way. And therefore, you know, Hasidus that we're learning right now, Tanya. So, interesting. There's two reasons why we study it. Two underst- explanations, rather. The reason why we study it is because it's a mitzvah too. God wants us to. Right. How do we know? Well, because it ever told us. <laughs> that's how we, That's how I, I know. Right. Um, prophet, you know, comes and tells you this is a mitzvah, so you, you listen. Um, so. One of the reasons we study Tanya today and why it became actually innovative, think about it. Uh, became innovative. What does that mean? How do you have innovative? What does it mean, innovative? How does things become innovative? What do you mean? Isn't Torah God's word that he gave us at Har Sinai? So where's their innovation? Well, innovation is, um, and this is the amazing thing, unique about Judaism, and as I've mentioned many times, all truths come in paradox. 
in a paradox. What's a paradox here? The Ten Commandments are carved in stone. The 613 commandments that are 613 and no, no more, no less, it's not changing. Biblical commandments, at least. So there's no change. If you look at any Sefer Torah around the world, Torah scroll around the world, you will see written exactly the same. Maybe the, the actual writing might be a little different one Torah, but the, but the words, exactly the same. There's only one letter, actually, in the entire Torah that is a question. And the word Petsu Daka, the word Daka, in Parsis Kitsetse, is it with an ayin or with a hey? Otherwise, so, like, there's no change. At the same time, we speak about innovation. We're supposed to innovate in Torah. We gave the explanation here, we understand, because of Klippa, that the shell that's covering over divine wisdom that needs to be revealed. Yes, exactly, even in Torah. There is an evolvement. So therefore, Hasidus was not something that was, um, you know, that was revealed 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, but only in the last two, 200 and so years. Why? Because the world is darker now, so we need a greater light. That's one explanation. So therefore, God gives us always the tools that we need in our lifetime. So therefore, we, in order that we should refine the world, we need a greater light in order to, you know, begin it, go, going deeper into the tunnel, deeper into the mine. You need stronger light. It's getting darker. So you could see, you know, just as well as when you were closer to the surface and there was some natural light, right? So therefore we need Hasidus. Well, that's one explanation. And the other explanation is because Hasidus, Tanya, is a taste of Mashiach. And therefore, as ever Shabbos, there is a mitzvah to taste the foods of Shabbos in order that, um, well, simple reason, in or the simple reason is in order that when Shabbos comes, you know, we should have tasty foods. It's, it's a mitzvah to have pl the pleasure of the foods on Shabbos. So you taste it. And the metaphor, the mystical meaning behind that is Shabbos is the times of Mashiach, the seventh millennia. We're in the sixth millennia right now, approaching to the times of Mashiach. By the way, you can bring Shabbos in early, so hopefully Mashiach is coming today, so we bring in Shabbos early. Um, And um, so it's a mitzvah to taste the foods that's going to be in Shabbos. Times of Shabbos, I mean, times of Shabbos, the times of Mashiach. What are we going to do? Learning the inward esoteric teachings of the Torah, which is about understanding how every mitzvah that we do is a union, a marriage, in the divine order of things. So we're going to learn that then. We're getting a taste of it now, when we're learning Tanya, when we learn Chassidus. We get a taste of that, which is magnificent. How amazing and how empowering. So these are the two ways we can we can still see we're in Golis, we have a greater light, and therefore we need to refine the world. And that was until the Rebbe came out and made the statement that we uh, need to live Mashiach Dik and therefore see the world in a different light and therefore study Torah in a different manner, like in the times of Mashiach, which is the positive element of everything, pure positivity, um, which is phenomenal, unbelievable. Okay, enough of me talking. Questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, I'll give me a moment. I know I have some questions here on Facebook. Before I lose the feed, I'm sure I lost... Um, I def I have lost a lot of the um, of the feed. So if someone had a question um, bef before Denise made a reminder of Rambam today at one o'clock, thank you. And tonight six thirty for my for the Torah studies class. Thank you for reminding everybody. So if it was something from before that, you're gonna have to repost it, please. Um, so I did see questions.
Drida, when our departed ones hear us speaking divine wisdom, does that elevate their neshama? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mazel tov to Rina. Her mom's birthday and twin sister's birthday. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Mazel tov. Shnas tzlacha ubracha. Um, David, I know you had another. Oh, do we have to gather all the lost divine sparks before Mashiach can come, or will it be fully done when he comes? Well, we got it. I mean, we're doing it now, and as the Rebbe says, we got to live Mashiach Dik like it was done. Um, and as done, yes. Uh, David, another question Do non Jews study Torah in the world to come? If so, it is only no hide laws since the Torah was only given to the Jewish nation. So yes, non-Jews will study Torah. Um, I'm not certain what aspect. You know, is it, you know, is, is it the seven no hide laws at all? Uh, I'm, I'm not certain. It might be more than that. It might be more than that. So I'm, I'm not clear on that, to be quite honest. I think it's beyond the seven no hide. Vida, does the world go into darkness? before Mashiach comes. Yes, there is. Oh boy, are we living in a time of darkness? That's why we have to. We need Hasidus more than ever before. How do we know who Mashiach is? Um, we will. We will know. We will know. How? We'll know. We'll know. Especially since you're learning Tanya. You'll know. Karen, does this mean that we eradicate evil from this world through mitzvah and Torah studies, sending knowledge to the universe and the divine below? So when Mashiach comes, the final evil will be eradicated and we will delve deeper into the good. Um, very good, Karen. Um, let me. We're eradicating the evil now, believe it or not. And we just need to continue what we're doing. And we're doing that. Um, I don't know what more. Um, I don't think it's like necessarily, you know, the final blow will come with Mashiach coming. The truth is, I don't really know. <laughs> All I know is we got to study Torah, do mitzvahs, and have a, and if we can try to have the, Mashiach mindset is an amazing accomplishment. Uh, not a simple one, but an amazing one. Alan, please share, please share with us. Shavuot. Shavuot. Uh, Shavuot. And uh, I just want to say, firstly, that I'm so glad that you're giving this year in uh, on Clubhouse. And it's so great to wake up in the morning. <laughs> And, uh, you know, turn on your phone or computer or what have you and, and just, you know, contemplate these things. Um, Thank you. Thank you. But I, I have some, you know, some things that, that uh, some things that I was illuminated by and some things that are disturbing to me. Go ahead. Uh, and if you could, if you could just give me a, a couple of minutes just to describe what it is and then I ho hope you can uh, help me with this, okay? Sure. So the idea here is how to eradicate evil from the world. Right. And, you know, from what I've, looked, what I've heard, and which is kind of, I think is pretty standard in Chabad, is the focus on Mashiach, and Mashiach is almost here, or Mashiach is here, and to put our concentration on that. You know, so, so it's like you were describing the difference between living like we were in exile, and that living like redemption is unfolding. Right. Now. Okay. And I got that. But also historically, you know, I take a look at, you know, how we have struggled um, with this concept of Mashiach. I mean, my understanding also, you know, going back in the day where, you know, as the Hasidic world developed and there were Misnag 
Fakhdim. Right. Who to Part of the con- concern about Ms. Fakhdim, the, the, the Hasidim and Ms. Fakhdim, there was tremendous stuff that they believed in common, you know? Right. But one thing that a lot of the Mishnahim were a little concerned about was they were living in the age of the Frankists, you know? Right. Of people who, you know, and they were afraid of lo- losing more Yidin. Um, right. Through, you know, through people who were, who were so anxious for Mashiach. Right. Um, that they would uh, endanger the continuity of Yiddishkeit, you know? So... Um, so, you know, my my concern also has been that, you know, when I'm taking a look at eradicating evil, I don't personally have to take a look at Mashiach coming or that, that the uh, redemption is unfolding. I take a look at it this way. You know, how to eradicate evil in this world? I think of it as a scientist, you know. I think of the coronavirus that has been our, our plague, you know. You know, what does scientists do, you know? First, they identify the evil. They de- identify the virus. They learn to recognize it, right? Mm-hmm. Then they learn to distance themselves, ourselves from it, which is like wearing masks. And then they, they, and, and then, and then they figure out ways to teach our body to develop kind of an immunity toward it, which is, in a way... You know, so we could look at these same things is, you know, we figure out what, what evil is. We learn to recognize it. We learn to distance ourselves from it uh, through the engagement in mitzvot. Um, and through the engagement in mitzvot, we develop antibodies um, that protect us. You right. know? So, um, so I look at it, you know, in a way, kind of scientific terms. <laughs> Of taking a look at how we battle this uh, coronavirus, um, which doesn't necessitate thinking of of Mashiach, and and, and well, you know he should come speedily in our day, but you know it's just like uh, you know I, they're, they're, I feel there's a little bit danger putting the focus there uh, personally for me. You know I'm not I'm not I'm not saying anything for anyone else. You know in terms of their own amuna or or their own desire. Right. So, but so, for me, it, it's a re- re- representative problem. I'm going to let you get back to you. Okay, so thank you for sharing that, Alan. Appreciate that. Um, it, 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 if we understood the concept that we're speaking about over here, so then, you know, what we're talking about over here is something beyond identifying evil um and that's complete evil complete evil only gets its nourishment from klipas noiga so the the the, the mystical way in dealing, dealing with evil is to do more good now that doesn't mean someone who who's acting evil that therefore they shouldn't be you know um should not be um you know uh held accountable and and it needs to be dealt with but that's not the 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 mainstay of how to deal with evil the mainstay of uh, dealing with evil is not recognizing evil staying away from it um and uh staying away from it and you know uh and, or and battling it that's the old the old school of thought um the mystical or the deeper way is you do more good and if you really believe that God is all good and therefore the goodness in your doing brings more good into this world then little by little that will eradicate evil now again at times it's true you need to identify the evil and you have to deal with that evil a hundred percent not not discounting that that's not the mainstay that's not uh that's not a way to live that's not the way to live that was the old school of thought before Hasidus that you want to identify the evil and fight the evil push away the evil and and so on here this is a new way to look at things it is unique and ultimately a much more embracing 
healthier, empowering. Because when you fight a dirty person, you get dirty. When you don't allow the source of uh, nurture to come to that negative force, because you've extracted the good there, then you don't give the nourishment to it. Don't nurture, nourish the evil, um, do good. And that is what we're talking about. That's messianic. You're right. That's the old school of thought. And everybody can follow this school of thought that they want. But this is something uni unique and new. I'd love to have further conversation on this, but it's 1130. And we have another program starting right now. <laughs> which I invite you all to uh, our Zoom, 770-770-6085. Rabbi Mendy uh, Ressinger, Zooming Around the World. He's, where is he now? Uh, in, I forget now. But you can also get it on Chabad ZK on Facebook. Um, so uh, it's just starting right now. So uh, our, our, this other program so uh, the, Alan, I thank you so much for bringing that up because uh, a very important point, and it, I, hopefully that gave a little more um, um, uh, context to it. Panama, thank you, Davida. Yes, uh, Chabad in Panama. Yeah, but we'll, we'll have further conversation on this. But uh, do join us now with uh, Rabbi Mendy Bressinger uh, with Chabad with Panama going to Panama. That's pretty exciting. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Thank you all for joining. Wonderful day. Thank you, Alan, again. Really, Thank uh, you, Rabbi Fine. Um,